everyone, and welcome to Broadcast is Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name because it's all about Jesus, living life on purpose for Him. And I'm sure today in whatever you're doing, you're wanting to have great success, you're wanting to do good things, and I just want to encourage you to do what you do for Jesus, commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. I love the New Living Translation, Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Commit your actions. I mean, what are you doing? Where are you going? Commit those actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Today we have on Michaela Miller. She's talking to us from Montana. She's a friend of mine I met in Georgia. I used to work with her dad in Columbus, Georgia. Miller Robson, and I'm friends with her mom, Susie, just a great family. They've got three daughters, and their oldest daughter is now an actress. And so she's really active in the local community. And I heard a sermon from the Village Church with Matt Chandler, and he was just encouraging Christians to get out in the community, go be in your community, go serve on the board, go do the thing, you know, Go ask the waitress how she's doing and really ask her those questions to see how you can pray for her and just develop those relationships. And I just thought it was a really powerful message from Pastor Matt Chandler about doing what you do for Jesus. Whatever you do, whatever you do, do it for the Lord. So without further ado, I hope you're encouraged and inspired. Michaela Miller. How are you, Michaela? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. And you're in Montana right now, right? I am. I am. Okay. So you and your family, y'all picked up. You guys move into Montana. Tell us what you're doing in the acting world. So yes, um, moving to Montana has kind of uprooted me from where I was at. Um, Kind of, I had really grown to kind of make a name for myself and it was really, really hard to move up to a completely different state and kind of start all over again. Yeah. And, you know, for the longest time there, it was not going to lie. It was like all about me. I needed to do what was best for me. And it was um, just trying to make sure that I was up on a big platform. Yeah. And then I kind of moved here and I was so upset and just kind of depressed about having to start all over again. And I was just so angry at God. I was like, why would you let this happen? Why Mm -hmm. would you take away something that I really loved? And so, um, he has granted me so many opportunities, even though I've been angry at him, he continues to be faithful, even though I'm just not completely trusting or believing in him at certain times. And then I had the amazing opportunity of getting to be in a really big show up here in Montana called Brighton Beach Memoirs. Mm -hmm. And it was my very first show not being at a a family-oriented theater. So I used to act at the State Theater Georgia Springer Opera House, and I would always do like the children's musicals and things that were more geared for families and things like that. Yeah. And then I also did Family Theater, which is a wonderful, wonderful Christian community theater um, back in Columbus. And um, this was kind of the first time I was stepping into like a real world theater. Like you got to be serious about it. And um, it's not going to be all about God anymore, you know? And so kind of ha- having to the merge God into that place as well. And um, it was really cool because I got to connect with another actor who was a Christian, but she never really said it out loud. Mm-hmm. And then we started talking and she was like, I had no idea that there were Christian actors here in, in at this theater. And I was like, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of us here. It's just sometimes we're scared to say those things. Yeah. But I got to do a show there. It was one of my absolute favorite roles I've ever played. Um, it was a very challenging role. And I'm just so grateful that God provided that opportunity for me to be able to do that show. Other than that, um, God, moving up here to Montana, I thought was going to limit my opportunities, but God actually provided more than I could have ha- ever gotten back in Georgia. Really? Um, yes. Yeah. Georgia is full of films. Um, I was very lucky to be able to live in a place that 
had what I wanted to do with my life and gave me those opportunities. And so moving to Montana, it was like, am I going to have that opportunity now? Or is that going to not be there? And so when first looking at Montana, there was not a lot to offer. And I was very, very upset. I was like, this is not good. This is completely taking away really what I want to do with my life. Mm. And so then opportunities kind of started popping up and I kind of had to learn that what God has planned for our futures is greater than what we have planned. So I may have said, I want to be back in Georgia and I want to be doing films and stuff like that. And, and learning that mm. God sends us to places for a certain reason. Right. Right. And right. so, you know, I've had, had to learn how faith is just trusting God, even when we don't understand what he has planned for us. Right. And so when I finally opened my heart to these new opportunities that God had provided me that I wasn't seeing at the moment. That's when I started to truly understand that God sent me to Montana for a certain reason. Mm. And so I got to do that show. And also uh, God provided me the opportunity to be able to sign with the big agency up here. Wow. Um, Get it girl. So you're with an agency. Tell us about that. So I signed with them about uh, a month or two ago. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm just kind of getting plugged in with them now. Mm and kind of learning a little bit about what they do here in Montana. And uh, my agent kind of opened my eyes and was like, hey, there are opportunities in Montana for you to do things that you want to do. Mm. And, um, you know, we want to make that possible for you. And so um, I signed with them. And then I just really started to realize, I was like, wow, God is doing great things. And even though I wasn't able to see it at the moment, you know, I have a purpose up here. And it may not be what I expected it to be, but right. it is what God wanted and had planned for me. So right. the verse I want to share right now, Zechariah 410, and it's just the first part of it, because when anybody is starting something new, and I know a lot of people start new things or, you know, maybe just a new day, you know, it's a new day, but whenever you're starting something new, and I know you are starting off small, you are learning so much and God is putting you in front of different opportunities. And I don't want to say he's testing you, but he is. And, um, he is wanting you to choose him every time to choose him every time in that. And so I just want to encourage you with Zechariah 410, do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. And so you have said, yes, I am beginning and you're gifting is an acting. And I do want to talk about being an actress because it is a profession that we've never had on this podcast. You know, we're all about having people on who are using their position, no matter what it is to broadcast God's love. And there are struggles with each position. Each person has struggles in their job. And so as an actress, I can imagine the spotlight is on you, you know, and mentally, how do you balance. You're 18 years old. You know, whoever's listening to this might not be 18. You might be older or younger, but we want to learn from you, Michaela, because we know you're seeking God. And so we want to know what has God shown you about having the spotlight on you and more or less making that a reflection to him, like a mirror to him, if that makes sense. How do you balance that? So yeah, it is very hard um, when you're put into a spotlight it's very easy to say, look at me. I'm really great. I got this lead role. You know, I'm, you know, doing a great job sort of thing, but Mm -hmm. it's, it's also very easy just to say, you know, God gave me this opportunity. It's all because Mm -hmm. of God that I'm standing here. And so when I actually did Brighton beach memoirs and I got into a conversation with, um, with Karen, which is my friend, um, you know, we were talking about increasing God's name and decreasing our names, which is, I think, super cool that that's kind of your motto for the podcast. And we were talking about how we get up on stage every single night and we have the choice to be light, uh, a light to these people. Yeah. And the show may not be centered around um, a godly message or a faithful message, yeah. but we're still showing God's love through bringing joy and entertainment to these people, having conversations with them afterwards. Um, There may be faithful themes in it. And it's like, hey, let's talk more about that or something Mm -hmm. like that. Um, So that's something that is very hard. It's like, I could just easily say that 
I earned myself this position. But at the same time, I wouldn't be standing where I'm at today if it wasn't for God and his will for me. The coolest thing about hearing you and for people who don't know you, Michaela, meeting you now is that we can be praying for your future, praying for your giftings and abilities, because when you're gifted in something, and this goes for everybody who's listening, you just get better the more you do it. It's like, I'm sure when you're on stage, you're like, this is it. Like, this is an out-of-body experience. This is amazing, you know? And, And you're shaking your head. Yes, for whoever's listening, God has gifted you, Michaela, in that. And so now we get to watch you get better and better and better for the glory of God, knowing that all you've accomplished, he's done for us. So I'm so thrilled just to hear from you because you are humble in spirit. And one of the first things that you said when you were talking is, talking about decreasing us and increasing God. And so is there anything you could say to encourage somebody listening to decrease themselves and increase God just from your story? Yeah, it's very easy to try and increase our own names rather than just increasing his. So as I've gone through many experiences in my life where I've had highs and lows during my career, I was thinking about this yesterday too, which is so funny, um, getting prepared to do this, this interview about how ways that we can increase God's name rather than our own. Yeah. And nothing really came to mind, honestly. So I had been listening to some of your previous podcasts and I just kind of, something stuck out on how we got to walk by our faith and what he has planned for us. Mm. And so this is a very common Bible verse, but Joshua 1, 9, yes. have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord, your God is with you wherever you go. Yeah. So when I read that verse, I just think about how God's promised us that he's going to walk beside us, even in the midst of like hard times and uncertainty. Yeah. So, you know, moving to Montana was an extreme change for me. And it was like, where am I going sort of situation, you know, very uncertain times um, because it happened very, very fast. Yeah. And so I've just had to learn that he's walking beside us and that he's promised us that he's going to walk beside us just as he promised Joshua mm-hmm. and that our futures, you know, depend on walking by faith and in, in him, even when we don't understand what mm-hmm. he has planned for us. Um, yeah. I never really understood my purpose for the longest time. You know, I won't lie. I always doubt in myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, am I choosing the right thing to do? But I know when I get up on a stage or I'm in front of a screen, I'm shedding God's light onto other people's lives. Yeah. And that's what's so important to me. Um, having done one of the Kendrick brothers movies recently, I got to see how much God works in just one little production. You know, it may not be, you know, the Brighton Beach Memoir show I did wasn't exactly a faith-based show, but at the same time, there was moments there where I was like, you know, God is, is working in people's lives, even though it may not be an audience member. Did you just say you were in a Kendrick's brother film? Yeah, Did you just skate over that? Okay. For anybody who is listening and says, what's the Kendrick's brothers? Okay. Alex Kendrick was in the war room, overcomer, facing the giants, courageous. And he's an American film writer. Mm-hmm. So if you Google him, you see his face. If you know any of these movies, oh my goodness, Facing the Giants. I love it. Fireproof. Oh, all, all those movies. So good. Tell us more. We need to know because you just dropped that and kept talking like no big deal. But So this was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, back in September, the summer of 2019, um, they came to town to film overcomer which is the running movie with the girl Mm -hmm. who's running and all that and a bunch of my friends were in that movie and I was so bummed because I couldn't be in it because I was actually (laughs) I was actually filming another movie at the time yeah um I was on set a different day and so I wasn't able to be in it and I was so bummed and then we moved Mm -hmm. here to Montana and I found out that they were having an another casting call for the next movie that was coming to town and they decided to come back because they really loved Columbus. 
And so I was so bummed because I was like, I'm in Montana now and all that. And they didn't have a specific shoot date. They weren't like, we're going to be here through, you know, this day to this day. Right. And then like a few weeks later, it was announced that they were going to be back in the time that I actually was headed back to Columbus. Mm. And so I actually auditioned for one of the lead parts. Um, I heard back from them and then they found out that my schedule wasn't going to coincide kind of with the, mm-hmm. theirs. Mm-hmm. And so it didn't work out, unfortunately, but I did get to go back and be um, a background character. And that was super cool. That's awesome. Um, you know, a lot of times people are like, oh, being a background character is kind of lame or something like that. And I was like, no, I got to like observe how the Kendrick brothers are changing people's lives, you Mm -hmm. know, just seeing how they do their work. I -hmm. just got to kind of sit back and be like, this is a really cool experience. I love seeing them do what they do and the reason that they do it. And it was truly amazing. I was on set for two days, um, got to do it with my mom. My mom and I had the best time working together. It was the first time we'd ever worked together. Just kind of sitting back and seeing how great their work is and Mm -hmm. I knew in that moment, truly, that this is what I wanted to do with my life. Wow. I just sitting back and seeing them work. It was so cool. It was, it was like an out-of-body experience. I'm just sitting there like just in amazement of how they would take time out of their day to go and pray over people who were having a hard time or going through a hard situation. I got to meet both of the brothers and they were super wonderful. They actually are like a duo. So you have Alex and Steven and Steven doesn't do as much on screen as Alex does, but he does a lot of things behind the scenes. Like he'll write or he'll executive produce or he'll direct, you know, okay. or something like that. And I think that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I love seeing them work together because um, you know, they even told me they were like, they work together better, you know, than they would apart. And I thought mm-hmm. that was really cool. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of shows that like when the body of Christ comes together, that we are such a much more powerful voice than we would be apart. Yeah. And I thought that was really cool. Cause I saw like just a community kind of come together and we didn't know each other during, you know, the filming or anything like that. But, you know, I got to sit and talk with so many wonderful people and I just kind of sitting there and just, just observing. And I was like, this is really cool. This is what I want to do because it was all for God's glory and not for their own. Yeah. And I think that's one way that we increase God's name and decrease our own is when we make the work about him rather than ourselves. I love it. Romans 12, four, starting in verse four, it says, for as in one body, we have many members and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many are one body in Christ and individually members, one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, Let us use them if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. So I just love that you were just talking about how the brothers had different gifts and abilities and you as well, you know, and how that all works together. And so I'm just so excited about where God has you right now in Montana. God sent me to Montana is what you said. And I think that has so much power in it because thinking about everyone's situation differently. God sent me here. God sent me to do this. It makes us have so much more purpose and drive in what we're doing. So is there anything you wanted to share with us? Is there anything else? I have had a lot of really great opportunities that are off the stage and, you know, not on camera and things like that. Um, With God gifting me the abilities that and gifts that I have, you know, I'm very grateful to have them. I've always wanted to pass that on to someone else. Mm -hmm. So with any opportunity that I have, I love teaching theater classes, um, improv classes, things like that. And just kind of sharing the gift that I've been given Mm because, you know, we're always talking about like how we shouldn't hide away the things that God has given us, but share it with the world. And so, um, God's also given me the opportunity to, you know, write and direct and produce scripts for fundraisers, for missions and things like that. And so I'm very grateful that my church leaders have given me those opportunities and that God, you know, is using me to make a greater impact on the people out in the world. When you believe and trust in God, 
you have endless possibilities because the things that you create for yourselves can only go so far before you mm -hmm. hit roadblocks. Um, but with God, he's got a purpose and he's got a plan and he's going to see through to that. So just continue mm -hmm. trusting in him because he's great and he has great plans for your future. And don't be worried. Don't be fearful because uh, he's walking beside you through it all. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Michaela Miller. Where do you want us to connect with you at? You can follow me on Instagram. Um, it's Michaela Miller on Instagram. Okay. Uh, so um, I'm just so grateful that I had the opportunity to speak with you and speak uh, to God's people. And I just pray for you all as you listen to this, that you get something great out of it and just hear God's word impact on your heart. Yes. Oh my goodness. You are so sweet. I love your family. Love you, Michaela. And just so grateful for this time at the end of every podcast. We always pray, Lord, decrease us and increase you in Jesus name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Michaela, for sharing what God has on your heart. I hope you listening, you're encouraged, you're inspired to do what you do for Jesus. Maybe you just learned from an 18 year old how to walk the walk with Jesus and talk the talk with Jesus. Love how she wove scripture into her conversation. And even when she encouraged listeners, she was weaving scripture into that conversation. Thank you all for listening. Please share this podcast with your friends. And if you're still listening, go ahead and write a review. It would help us out a ton. It gets the podcast out to all kinds of people. I can't even describe to you how much writing a review in the podcast helps us. So if you have a second, please do it. Share this podcast with your friends. And I am sorry about the audio during that interview. It will get better. It was a mistake on my end. So I am the producer. <laughs> I like to thank God's the producer. And uh, he just equips me with the talents to know how to turn the microphone down. And I did not do that. So I hope you all have a great week. Lord willing, we'll talk to you all next week here on Broadcast is Love. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you will also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders to transform communities. God bless you guys and have a great day. Hi, y'all. This is Nan Charland, the owner of the Laurel Oak Inn Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville, Florida. You can find the Laurel Oak Inn on the internet at laureloakin.com or Facebook and Instagram, Laurel Oak Inn. Until we meet you in person, we certainly hope you're enjoying life to its fullest. <laughs>